it's Roxy with Roxy's Broadway Breakdown. Welcome back to my channel where I break down all things musical theater. And today I wanna to talk about special effects in musicals. Um, this is something we don't always think about because unless it's some big splashy musical that has some maybe like cool magic stuff in it or just, you know, really big effects like maybe some Disney show or Harry Potter and the Cursed Child or something with fast changes like Diana the Musical had some cool fast changes, but we're not going to talk about that show on my channel. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, we don't always think about it, but I want to talk about Sweeney Todd, the new revival, which has some really cool, gruesome effects with blood and the chair and the costumes. So let's get into this. I was reading a really interesting article in the New York Times uh, with Jeremy Chernick, who is in charge of special effects and the blood, uh, Mimi Lin, who did the sets, and Jesse Galvan, the wardrobe designer. So Jeremy Chernick was saying he really wanted to concentrate on what was too much blood that didn't gross out the audience, but what was just enough to give that really like <gasps> effect and, you know, kind of give the audience sort of that, oh, this is creepy, but great, and you know. Um, and then maybe Lynn wanted to design a really cool set and a cool barber chair, but that wasn't dangerous because in past productions, some actors have gotten hurt on the barber chair when Sweeney pulls the lever and they slip through the trap door. If you're not familiar with Sweeney Todd, spoiler alert, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of background. Uh, Sweeney Todd, the, the bare bones premise is, he is a barber that gets sent away on trumped up charges by a pretty cruel judge who wants Sweeney's wife. He comes back to get revenge and while waiting to get his revenge, he befriends Mrs. Lovett, who owns a pie shop. She doesn't have meat for the pie shop, and she's like, oh, while you're waiting around to get your revenge, you could practice on a few people. I'll get meat for the pie shop, and someday you'll get, you know, revenge on this judge. So he just becomes a serial killer. How he does it is he gets people into his barber chair, he slits their throat, um, it's this kind of snazzy little barber chair where he does, after he cuts them, he pulls the lever, they slip through a trap door, they go into Mrs. Lovett's pie shop, like the kitchen or the dungeon of her pie shop, she grinds them into meat, poof, they become a pie. There you go. All right, so Mimi Lynn, uh, the set designer, said she wanted the chair to be safe. She wanted it cool looking, but by all means, she wanted it to be safe. So she came up with this really cool Victorian looking chair with these cool hinges and levers. And it's made of this like ox blood, red synthetic leather. And um, so it has a really slippery, smooth surface because in the past, some actors, you know, got caught with their costumes and you know got tugged and there wasn't a smooth transition through the trap door but this is really smooth so the actors go feet first not head first she said i thought about making him go head first but that's dangerous so they go feet first through the trap door into and it's about a four to five foot drop but luckily it's into this padded area crew whisks them off from there they go into wardrobe where they get hosed down and costumes are whisked off. Wardrobe has tubs, slop sinks, three washers, three dryers, because they got to get this sticky um, sugar base blood stuff off of them. Um, so they got to get them pre soaked in these tubs, these slop sinks, any, you know, washroom that a serial killer would have. And uh, because, you know, this happens night after night and this, this blood stuff can't afford to soak through. Um, and sometimes there's two shows a day, so they gotta get this stuff off. There are spare costumes when they have to churn them that fast, but, so it's quite an operation backstage. There's as much drama backstage as there is on stage. Now, for the actual killing, slicing the blood itself, 
Jeremy Turnick said, in the past, the razor has sort of done the work. Uh, Sweeney's razor has, they've had a mechanism to like, you push it and the, there's like a little trigger that the blood comes out on the razor. But he said, I didn't really want that because I didn't know if enough blood would really show and I wanted a little bit more drama and effect with it. So he came up with a blood vessel within the barber apron itself that the actor wears and they have the power to control it. It's a little mechanism that when Sweeney cuts them, they, they push a little pump and the blood vessel starts squirting <laughs> the blood. So it looks like their throat's getting cut and the blood's gushing from their neck through the apron. It's pretty cool. Through the previews, they decided what's just enough amount of blood. They decided that a tennis ball size amount of blood was the proper amount. Not too much, not too little. Tennis ball, enough gushing, blood soaking through the apron, a little blood spatter. You get the you get the job done with that. So I thought that's pretty cool. Um, I hope I haven't ruined the magic for you. You know, if you go see this show, I so want to go see this show. This is at the top of my list. There's so many shows I want to see right now in New York, but this is certainly at the top. Um, I hope I haven't ruined it for you. If you're sitting there now watching it, you know, you're not thinking, oh, and now they're using the pump and now they've got to go get washed off and just go attend the tale of Sweeney Todd and sit back and relax and enjoy it. All right, just go, just go. All right, there you go. Subscribe to my channel. Check out all my other videos and I'll see you in my next.